All right, welcome back to another episode. We are still here at FETC. Another episode from the show floor here at FETC uh, of Focus on EDU. I'm Doug Conopelko with CDW Education, and I have some wonderful, incredible, very experienced with, with having these types of conversation folks with me today. So I'm going to throw it across the table and just let you all do your intros. All right. Well, thank you so much for having us. It feels weird because we're on wrong sides. So <laughs> it is true. We do have sides. It's like a off. thing. I know. It's okay. Do we we'll need make to it switch? Work. No, no, no. Okay. We'll make it work. It'll be all right. <laughs> well, hi, I'm Jenny Long. And I'm Salee Clark. And, and we, we are Generally. We are EdTech speakers, bloggers, authors of the Microsoft Teams playbook, and we are innovation leaders with Castleberry ISD, which is in Fort Worth, Texas. So together, Celine and I have over 40 years of experience in education. We love teaching, learning, and presenting, and we just love life. We love being together, and we're best friends. We've worked together for seven years, and we just have fun every day. We love um, our new school district, Castleberry ISD. If you haven't heard of them, they are super innovative. In fact, over 10 years ago, they were one-to-one, and then about six years ago, they began putting up Wi-Fi towers throughout the town, and every student now has Wi-Fi from the school and also a computer for them to use at home. So we are... We are so excited about being on their team and helping continue that legacy of innovation. I love it. When you said, should we do our regular intro, I don't think I knew what I was getting into, (laughs) but now I'm really excited that I said yes. So um, you mentioned both being at Castleberry ISD. Tell me a little bit about um, what your work looks like there right now, and then we can go to the you know world of conferences that we seem to run into each other at all the time. Sure. So we, um, Celine and I, have worked together for seven years. In our seventh year, we actually started uh, together in another district, Eagle Mountain Saginaw, which is a little bit north of where we are now. And we worked there together for six years, and we were very fortunate to go together to Castleberry. Celine had actually worked there previously, and so. Um, we went together because, you know, we're a package deal. And uh, we just get to work really closely with curriculum and looking at the, um, you know, the, the, the standards and seeing where we can um, really change the, 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 the content and really bring in that innovation. And so we work with the curriculum and then we go in classrooms and we um, sit in PLCs and we just kind of help see where we can just change whatever they're already doing but make it a little bit more innovative. I think one of the things I'm most excited about um, within the structure of the school day for Castleberry is they have built in a PLC time for every teacher every day. So they have their 45-minute conference period, but then they also have a 45-minute PLC time, which is key, I feel, because a lot of times, you know, conference periods get taken up with that or they have to stay after school to do PLC. So for it to be given a specific slot within the day, it really allows you know, everyone, not just us, but also curriculum, people to be able to meet and really tackle and look at data and figure out how do we help our students learn. So I know you have a tagline, so you can, let's let's go with, tell us the tagline, but then also tell us, like, what does it mean and look like in practice? Because I think we all have, like, those things we're used to saying, right? Especially, you know, we've worked a ton with all different school districts around technology and technology integration. I feel like we've got a lot of go-to phrases, and sometimes the, like, the real meaning of it gets lost after a while. It just kind of becomes a string of words. So give me the string of words, but then tell me more about it. All right. Well, we love making learning accessible and fun for all. So accessible, kind of break it down a little bit. Accessibility, as moms of children with dyslexia, we each have, she has a son, I have a daughter, and um, we have we have lived the journey of trying to help our children um, learn in an accessible way and use materials that um, work for them. And we're very fortunate to have been in a Microsoft district previously, and our kids are um, there now, and they've been able to use all the Microsoft tools, which we just love. We love OneNote, we love Teams, we love everything that um, is offered in inking, and dictating and immersive reader and it's just been life-changing for us as moms so we, we live and breathe it all the time and so accessibility means a lot to us. I would even say it became like a passion project for us because as moms we didn't have the answers to help and so through discovering it and figuring it out it became like oh my goodness like other moms and other families also don't have these same tools or knowledge of these same tools so it really became uh, important for us to share everything we could about accessibility tools. Um, um, and then, of course, for fun, 
helps you have your we, we love having fun. We think learning is fun. We think life is fun. Um, and everything that we do, we have fun. And we think that's a standard that should be known and done within school. I'm going to take a little bit of a left turn. And it just it, follow me for a minute. So I think there's a lot of people who also look to, um, you know, folks like the both of you who are doing really amazing work, both within your district, and then we'll talk a little bit more again about, like, conferences and things like that. And they kind of say, like, well, I want to do that too, right? And I think one thing we can all agree on is that, like, a job where you travel to conferences sounds really amazing at the beginning, and sometimes it still is. It, is. it still is. I'll just say it still is, not sometimes. But it definitely doesn't come without... It's ups and downs, challenges like anything else. But talk to me about the journey of we're friends who work together to like we're friends who work together and build this thing together. That's a great question. I, I like the left turn. Good job. That's a great one. It's actually another one of our stories that is who we are because we've this is our seventh year of working together and I feel like we've been best friends forever and oh, yeah. instantly when we started um, working together seven years ago we clicked immediately we have common goals we have we believe the same things and we just we really fit really well together but it didn't happen overnight we had to learn each other's strengths and that's one thing we did the strength finders um, assessment as a team in our previous district and until that moment when we realized what each other's strengths were we let go of the, the things that we weren't strong in so like I know Slee's strengths I know that she can create and she has all these amazing ideas and then I can um, communicate and work the calendar and we just let go of those things that weren't our strengths and so we empowered each other to to excel in that and then we started just working so much more efficiently and so that really really kind of pivoted our relationship and what we did together as a partnership. It was almost like we were best friends and we liked each other so much we wanted to be like each other however we are completely different and our strengths are completely different and so through learning each other's strengths, we were then able to value it. And I also would say this, um, it takes a lot of trust to be in this type of relationship as well. Um, because I trust Jenny to communicate. I trust her to arrange to make sure that all of our things are lined out the way they should in the same way that she trusts that I'm going to create quality material that is, um, you know, where it should be and about what it should be. Um, and so it, it does take a lot of trust and uh, working together through all of it. And like she said, it didn't happen overnight. It took time. If every marriage could be like this. It, it is. It is, a man, it is like a marriage. <laughs> Was there a specific turning point where you said, okay, we've we've tried this out. We went and presented at a conference together. We created this presentation. Um, we didn't murder each other. Maybe we should make this a thing? Was there like, is there a point in time that you remember being like, okay, this is going to become like the thing? Like, when did you become... Generally, yeah, generally. <laughs> like, when did that? Yeah, when did that happen? It was actually funny because we have a coworker. Whenever we would go, there were ten of us on our team um, that, over time, and we would go two by two or more than that to campuses, and so we would blend our names. And he kind of mushed our names together, and we were like, "Oh, we really like that. We're gonna go with it." But then, I mean, not mine and his name because no. his name Slicky. is Ricky, and so we would be Slicky together. So we're not, we can't merge our names. Didn't work. Not a thing, no. But it was actually almost four years ago we went in, um, and so we started, teachers started having questions, and we realized over 28 campuses in our district that we were getting the same question over and over. And so we thought, what if we just go in and do little interviews with them, you know, put it on YouTube and just... You know, have this uh, channel where we can go with people's and questions and talk to students about things that are happening in their classrooms. And so we went in and worked with a high school teacher. We did a little interview with her, and we started our little high five. And we'd get the whoever our, our we were interviewing, we'd get them in the middle. We'd join them in our high five. We'd play a little game, and so it really was like this is fun. Let's call it the Gently Show. And so that was a, the birth of our YouTube. And um, did you mention we were finding that people had... Yeah, okay, good. I was like, wait, we've told the story so many times, and both of us take parts. I'm like, I don't know which part we're on. 
And um, so my approach <laughs> it's okay. She did. It's okay. I'm like, wait. <laughs> if you're back, no, um, I mean, I think it was um, at that moment we realized, oh, we really want, you know, to do this and to be able to share tips and tricks with people. And then not only did our teachers use it, but then we found people um, in our PLN started reaching out and saying, hey, how do you do this? Can you help us do this? Like um, reaching out for help and then we'd make them videos and send them little tutorials. And I'll also say um, good friends also encouraged us. Um, to continue going and also go to conferences like Brian Smith and Claudio Zavala both. Um, at the beginning, they were like, girls, y'all are amazing. You need to continue presenting and go, you know, share this awesomeness with others. So I think, you know, having good friends um, encourage us was also essential in that. So fast forward four years from that moment, we are now here at FETC. Um, you all have had a lot of involvement already this year. Talk to me about, I know there's no like standard conference, but like what do you like to do? What stands out for you when you come to a show like this? I would say the connections with people. It's both of us love meeting people. In fact, when you look at our strengths, it's kind of funny. Jenny is a wooer and I am a connector. And so both of us love being around people and connecting with people. And I would say just seeing old friends, connecting with them, but also the ability to meet new friends and start new friendships and uh, partnerships right, with people so is super important to us. And it, we oftentimes say we haven't really been to any sessions because we keep ourselves so busy. But you know, one of these days we're actually going to go and attend and learn um, from our friends. But we also learn a lot from just connecting with people. Like we were asking questions and going back and forth. And I can remember, you know, from the MIE expert community. Um, the first the year we were was, in it, we became friends um, with Scott Bricker, what, and at the end of the year, we were trying to wrap up teams and figure out how do we, you know, close all these accounts um, and how do we archive it, and we called him immediately, and we were like, hey, help us, like, we, we barely know you, but can you help us? And so I think, you know, having those connections was really important for us, and if we wouldn't have been at an event like this, you know, that connection wouldn't have been made. Favorite session to deliver? Oh my goodness. I would, which one would you it's say? It's so funny too, because oh, as we were been going through our decks and like tweaking things, we pulled up some old ones and we were like, oh my goodness. Like we, and then we were like, oh, we did this really great coaching session. We need to bring that back. Or our very first ones were virtual coaching and we talked about how we use OneNote and YouTube. You know, we used that platform that we started and um, it just has progressed so much. And then we actually did a branding session here this week and we looked at our branding and how that's changed. We used to use our Bitmoji and now, you know, we've kind of, gotten a little more professional with that so that's been fun but I, would I mean say it still has a high five of course <laughs> yes. I mean that's what's important like, high five and a little song for yes <laughs> yeah. for me I just love the the creation and the creativity and um, we, we do a lot of Canva presenting uh, and just how to empower your students to be creative and share their voice so I just love those types of sessions and they're fun and like the ones that we just said this earlier I just love a session where we call them tambourine moments because we actually had a teacher that I don't remember why was it that we said something about the tambourine and she actually went and bought us tambourines and so we we have I carry it with me all the time and so whenever there's like a wow or some new learning moment we I should shake the tambourine and I said that's a tambourine moment but I just love those moments where teachers are like jaw dropping you know like oh my gosh like when we can share things that are time saving and help them be more efficient that's that makes me happy I also think um, a lot of times I think one of the things that what our friends keep saying to us is that we share practical tips that they can turn around and use tomorrow um, so a lot of people that watch our TikTok videos or YouTube videos they're like oh my goodness I can use that right now I think the, our my favorite sessions are the ones where we're able to give them things that they can instantly use and put into practice you mentioned I think TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, and maybe even a couple others over the course of this. Do you spend a lot of time on social media? And if so, is it like focus time where you're like, this is my social media time? Or is it frantic all the time craziness? That's a good Funny. question. Scott was actually talking about that in the, um, we did an SEL session and he was talking about using Outlook Focus and you know having a time on your calendar where it's just set aside and he only has like a social media time. I'm like, I literally check Twitter every 
five minutes. Yes. So I and I do a lot of like the scheduling of our posts and all that. We also blog, um, and so it's a lot like between our personal accounts and our. I would our say joint between account. the two of us, she stays on Twitter and LinkedIn a lot, doing our posts on there and scheduling them. I would say I write a lot of the blogs, and then I stay on TikTok. That would be my stay ahead of the trends. I have to. I, it's actually really hard. Like people make fun of it, and they're like. It's so easy. You just get on there and make a little video. And I'm like, no, no, I don't think you understand. Like, you have to know what the trends are. You have to know what's coming next. You have, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, although I have so much fun doing it. But well, I'm not on it all the time. So. She'll watch some video, and then I'm like, okay. And she's like, well, now we're going to do this and this and this and this with it. And I'm like, how did you envision that from just that one video? Like, it's crazy how her mind can just tweak everything into this. It's just because I've been perusing uh, and seeing other people do it, I'm sure. But it is fun. Uh, but, I mean, that is nice, the good part about having two people. You can kind of split the jobs up um, to make sure that, you know, you're able to do more than just one platform. To make sure that only one of you gets sucked into the TikTok <laughs> vortex. I'm really good about, well, Jenny knows, I'm really good about um, knowing myself and knowing when I need to put technology away. And so there are times I will just put my phone away and not have anything to do with it. In fact... My husband was out of town last Friday, I think, and I just put the phone away, and I just went to bed early, and Jenny freaked out at, like, 9 o'clock at night, and it was like, I can't find Celie. She's not answering the phone. She calls my son. She calls my mom. I was like, Jenny, fine. But I, I kind of knew. I was like, okay, I bet she's she gone to bed because this is what I do. she needs so her downtime. I do. But I, I have worried. to have downtime, but I'm really good about just taking it. Like, I, I'm, I just put it away. I also am good about not getting sucked in because uh, we are so busy, I can't can't get sucked in so I have to be very strategic with my time all right um, you give or you create a lot of content you give a lot of practical tips with managing a blog and multiple social media accounts and things like that what's the one productivity piece that you feel like you can't live without in your workflow mm -hmm. I think we, we've been saying this Let's a lot this it. week. Let's we've been like, it. okay, I bet we know the same we answer. Norm and we normally we say the same thing. That's why we always say that. But then we've been lately, a we've been off. Really. But I feel like we're going to be on on this one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's, Let's hear try it. it. Okay. One, one, two, three. Two, three. One, one note. note. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. So we have a one note um, that we've shared for, gosh, at least five years. At least. Years. Yeah. And we put everything in there. And we just, all of our conference notes and our organization of everything. And even just this week, you know, she's like, well, I need that link or whatever. And we just put it in the one note. So it's not, it eliminates having to email each other and like even just put images or links, whatever it is. We just put it in there. But it just helps our, um, I'll do a lot of charts and just the little check boxes. So we do. She's the arranger. I mean, that's her skills right there. Everything is in our one note. Everything. Do you write the blogs and social media posts and everything ahead of time in there together, like collaboratively, or you just do it? Um, but it's but it's in there, and then you're deciding like, okay, once I post it, I mark something that says this has now been posted, or is it more of just whatever is the most recent thing? is what we're working on. I usually do that within the blog. So like right now I've got, I was doing it just the other day. I go in and make a whole bunch of drafts of my ideas. So they're drafted in there. Uh, just even just the titles of the blog, next blog post I want. So I've got like six sitting in there. And then when I feel inspired, I'll just run in type away, blog away, put in, and it usually does come from TikToks or YouTube videos that we've done. I'll throw them in, and then I'll be like, okay, Jenny, one's ready. So then she'll go, she checks the grammar, she rearranges it, makes it look different if she, sometimes my brain is crazy, so she has to put order to things. <laughs> and then she's able to schedule. But we do um, use um, Meet Edgar, which pulls automatically from our blog and from our YouTube and will tweet for us. Although Jenny typically goes in and edits the words and the language that it uses. I think that's one thing, too. We want to make sure we're being authentic. And I don't really like when things just auto-generate and yeah. without having our personality uh, yeah. as part of it. And we can, you know, tweak the words, but I like tagging people and making sure that it's not just looking like it's just automated all the time. So but I do go of, in and do a lot of editing on that. Right. And one of the reasons we did get it, though, is we do produce a lot of content and we forget what we've produced. And so it, it pulls things that are older that we're like, oh, yeah, that was so 
good. Okay, that's a great thing for us to like bring back up that we haven't shared out in a while. I love the the drafts piece because that is my like. So on my blog, I'll say there's I don't know a hundred published posts, but there's like a hundred and forty drafts. I have a lot more than six, yeah. but that's that's what's like going to be done. The others are not going to be done. Well, and and what tends to happen is like you said, I'll, sometimes it's just a title. And I'll go back, and it'll be like two years later, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, that sounds so interesting, and then I click on it, and I didn't write anything. I just wrote the title, and I'm like, oh, so familiar. That what is so a me. letdown. <laughs> I was like, I got me so excited to see that. But then I go through them, and I'm like, can I delete these? Can I delete yeah. these? Because there's so many drafts. Yes, but it's like that's my way of like brainstorming in the moment, and I know if I put it in there, I'll go back one day and see it. Although sometimes I do, I mean, this happens a lot, actually, I do come up with like whole graphics or whole blog post. I mean, we go back and Jenny will find stuff and she's like, what have you been doing with this? I'm like, I don't know. It's just sitting there. I'm like, we got to do something with this. Let's put it out there. She's like, it's so cute. Why haven't you shared this? I'm like, I forgot. I just, yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry, but it was good. It it was good. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and then you get to those moments where you've written out the whole thing and it starts out as like, oh, this is gonna be perfect. It's gonna be like two little tidbits that I'm gonna share. And then it's like two hours later and you're like, am I still working? Like, yes. is this still the same one? I have to close this. Yes. And like, this one's going in the archives. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what happened in the middle, but it, it, when I read it back, it looks like I lost my mind. <laughs> what is this? So if you can think of one, do you have like either a post or a series of posts that like you wrote and then you were like this can never see the light of day Ooh, that you can remember? Hmm. I don't think so. Nothing is always so great. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's perfect. Hmm. <laughs> I can't think of anything though that I mean, I'm like you though. I have a lot of drafts that I just never touch or do. Um, and so some, I would say the things that don't get seen are things that are old or not relevant anymore that I've thrown in. I was going to say not relevant. Like we we'll yeah. come back and we're like, oh, oh that that's doesn't, kind of past yeah. that now. Oh, that app was purchased by a different company <laughs> exactly. and doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, ha- I had a series I was doing on like presentation tips at one point. Mm-hmm. And like the first one I did was super general and people were like, oh, tell us more. Mm-hmm. Then I got like did one that was more specific yeah. Yeah, and, and then said like, I still have seven other things I want to share. And then, like, each time I wrote that next one, I was like, I don't like it. I don't like it. So I literally have this post out there that's like, this is going to be 10 presentation tips, and there's three. And then it's like, in the next post, you'll get the rest. (laughs) Never got the rest. Uh, That would 100% happen for me. However, Jenny would have it in her calendar to remind me that we need to make sure we go back and finish that post. So you need a Jenny. Yeah. (laughs) Favorite, this is going to be the last one, um, favorite conference experience. You each have to pick one, and it can't be the same one. Even if you say the same one at the same time the first time. <laughs> you already know as well. That's hard. I mean, and everyone is so different, and we have such great memories from each one. I just love those moments when you, like, you've connected with people online and then you meet them in person for the first time and there's that running and hugging and like oh it's so nice to meet you i would probably say mine is bet uh 2020 um because that was my first time in london wait it should be my i gotta go first i would say (laughs) are you gonna copy me no i'm first no she's first i see i start (laughs) stop talking it's my turn I would say bet. Okay. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm Good Go example. I'll let, I'll let her go. <laughs> um, so Celie is a world traveler, and I love so to travel. she actually created favorite. a beautiful um, Canva travel guide for Tisha Richmond because she went the next year and she didn't know where to go and she was getting in early, and so it's incredible. But um, in 2020, before the world shut down, we did get to go to bet and we worked in the Microsoft booth and we presented um, Teams and OneNote and we just had a blast. Like it was so much fun. Every 30 minutes we were just rolling and doing session after session and we were just getting these huge crowds and we were just, I mean, we were just having so much fun. And then I pretty much think I got COVID at the end of the week and then um, I, had, I got so sick. We shut the airport down as we landed oh, in Dallas. And I had to fly home by myself because Celie um, left her passport in the um, hotel 
It's one of those drafts, you know. We were just sitting there. That passport was in draft. <laughs> and I was so scared because I've never like gone to London, and I was like, silly, I don't know what I'm like, doing. You'll be fine. Around. Just get on the plane. You'll be fine. But it was the best worst experience, <laughs> but it was just an incredible. And Vet is so different than our typical conferences that we have here, so it's just a really um, different and fun experience. Okay, I would say the MIE Expert Summit that we went to in Seattle. Um, It was held at Microsoft's campus, and we had the opportunity to meet all of the different um, uh, project managers around campus, and then we also got to tour campus and got to explore, and I think it was just a really amazing moment to really meet uh, the other fellow uh, Microsoft experts and build that family, continue building that family. All right, so very last thing, anything else you still have to do here or that you're excited about um, before you head out? We have two more sessions tomorrow, and then um, one of them is the E-Twins are doing, uh, they're kind of leading it, it is the self-regulation, uh, but they do a really good job with that one, and then we we do a fun little mystery Skype one with them also with doing Globally Connected, and it's basically the, the premise is flip, and using grid pals and connecting and making those um, virtual connections and just worldwide connections, so we have a lot of fun with that one. So those are our last two. And I would also say, hopefully we get to walk around the vendor floor a little. We have not had a moment to go and peruse, so we're hoping that we get a chance to walk around and explore. And rest up before TCA next week. There you go. Well, thank you so much for your time and spend a little uh, telling your story here with us today. Thank Thank you you so much for having us. Don't forget to go and be a different kind of awesome. (laughs) Had to end with it. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks. Thank you.